It's the cube. Hi, this is Greg Stewart with the Cube, and I'm on the ground in San Francisco, California, at Mito Kura's offices for our next edition of our Women in Tech series. And I'm here with systems engineer here at Mito Kura, Cynthia Thomas. Cynthia, welcome to the Cube. Thanks, Greg. Nice to see you. So I thought we'd just first dive into a little bit more about what Mito Kura is and, and your role here. Sure, yeah, so Mitokur is a software networking company. Um, we have started about five years ago in 2010. Uh, we're predominantly engineering at first. Um, our CEO and our chief architect are ex-Amazon folks. Um, so they, they built the product basically with distributed systems in mind. So allowing us to highly scale in a, in a highly resilient manner. Mm -hmm. um, so today we're mostly known for basically our Neutron plugin for OpenStack. So solving the networking for OpenStack. Um, but we also have VMware vSphere integration, and our vision moving forward is to get more visibility on the underlay, on the physical infrastructure. Uh, so we'll also have agents, basically, that will be what we envision on white boxes with Linux running, just to get more visibility on the underlay as well. Nice. So I was reading a little bit about your uh, latest product, MitoNet, and its uh, swift adoption in the in the open source space. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? Oh, definitely. Yeah. So actually, as of last November at the OpenStack Paris Summit, we announced we went open source. And we've had uh, an influx of people who are interested. And that was our intention, really, to just get the product out there um, and remove any obstacles for um, uh, barriers to entry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, people are definitely adopting it, and, and it's been well received. Now, uh, you know, not, not too many women in networking. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you got interested in this field and, and how you got to your role where you are today here at, here at, uh, at Mitokura? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I, I think it started when I was young. I, I always liked math and, and science. Um, so those were kind of my strong suits. And um, early on, my, my mentors, I guess you could say, my role models, I have an older sister who's mm -hmm. in engineering. Um, and my, my parents kind of focused more on education. So my dad, more having an engineering mind, he sort of removed the barriers for uh, social norms as to what to play with. So my sister and I, play with, we played with Barbies, Legos, cars, and trains, you know? So okay. like everything across the board. Um, so we never really you know, thought of ourselves as, you know, girls can't do this or can't do that. Um, and then in high school, you know, again, I love math and science, so that was positive. By the time I got to university, it was when I realized, really, there's not many women in my field. Mm -hmm. um, no professors, you know, maybe one in my fourth year. Um, and at that point, you know, it was a little different. There was only 10, probably 10% 10 of the computer engineering program were females. And then the specific program I was in, math and engineering, at Queen's University, basically I was one of two females in my program. Um, but carrying forward, um, I always heard, you know, I'm interested. I like things that are logical. I like um, patterns. I like problem solving. Um, so I, I still continued on, and I never, I never thought about being female as you know mm -hmm. holding me back for this uh, field. Um, and uh, and and then I moved forward and got into the networking industry, basically. Great. So yeah. so Cynthia, if you had to go back in time and if you were to start, you know, your your freshman year again at, at Queen's University in Canada. Um, what would your recommendation be to, to the young women starting off and in, in how that they can further themselves in, in the field of technology? Uh, well, I think there's a lot of you know, online resources today, you know, especially people in, maybe in remote places. Um, here in the Bay Area, there's a lot of camps and um, meetup groups, for example, that women and girls can join in camps on weekends. Um, so I think people more in remote, they should like, take advantage of things that are online because there's just a ubiquitous amount of information available. Um, and, and look for mentors, I think. I think that's really key. Um, and keep, keeping positive, you know, if you love a passion, if your passion is technology, you know, focus on your passion yeah. and just excel and do well. Good. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, I'm Greg Stewart here on the ground in San Francisco, California. Be sure to check out all of our Women in Tech interviews on siliconangle.tv slash women in tech. You're watching theCUBE.